Hey YouTube, welcome back to Axies and Allies, the Garrison. This is another episode of the YouTube Wars. I am your host, Detroit, coming to you from the bunker here in Rochelle Park, New Jersey. All right, guys, we are getting there, okay? It is Russia's second to last episode, all right, uh, or turn for that matter. This is episode 7.2, 7.2, and VK Cowboy is really putting the pressure now on the... Warmark on Dutch Lancaster and his German Third Reich. Hey, I'm telling you, it's getting hot. Okay, definitely. Uh, you'll see today that uh, Cowboy will go on the offense with his German forces. He is definitely putting a lot of pressure on Germany. Okay, and you'll see that there's a lot of movement going on. As a matter of fact, not a lot of movement, but a lot of minor, many, many uh, minor battles uh, will take place in this turn. Uh, Cowboy will make a total of seven combat movements where he will liberate the entirety of the, of the Soviet territory and then some. Okay, you'll see that Cowboy will move into Romania, Slovakia, Hungary, uh, I believe uh, also Finland. So definitely Russia now is poised to strike at the heartland of the Third Reich. However, the war is not yet over and Dutch Lancaster will have a response to the German aggression. Remember, we are rapidly approaching now uh, round eight and the Axis need to acquire and maintain a total of 12 victory points by the end of round eight. The question is, can the Axis pull it off? Okay, and uh, this is the big point of contention between many of my between not many, but several of my viewers, all right? So we'll finally have the answer within a couple of rounds. And guys, as I like to say, enjoy the episode. And as always, let me know what your thoughts are regarding the strategies and tactics that we are using. In this all right, game. guys, so it is episode 7.2. It is the Soviet Union's turn and the Red Army finally gets to go on the offense, okay? It's a limited offense, though, because as you can see in the Eastern Front, there is a sort of detente going on. And in part, this is because Dutch Lancaster, who is the commander of the German uh, Warmacht, has decided to uh, reinforce uh, those territories that are immediately around uh, the regions uh, closer to Germany. Okay, so, and the reason for that is that in this region, you have two uh, victory cities or two, uh, uh, yes, victory point cities that are essential for the Axis war efforts. So uh, Dutch Lancaster is basically at this point in time focusing on really defending uh, these two key critical victory cities. So uh, that's the reason why, in part, I believe Dutch Lancaster is no longer uh, going on the offense on the Eastern Front because there's actually very few victory points that he could acquire by launching uh, major offensive operations against the Soviet Union at this point in time. All right, so having said that, okay, where are we on the uh, victory point system? I believe that currently the Axis have a total of nine victory points. I believe Germany currently has three. Uh, Italy has won with, uh, the, with, with the victory point of, uh, city of Rome. Okay. And the Japanese have currently a total of five. So that's nine victory points. Let's keep in mind that, uh, the Axis need, okay. They need a total of 12 victory points that they must maintain until the very end of round eight okay so however some of you may say three that's a lot to catch up on but you know what the axes are very very close all right the axes can definitely win this game hands down okay so uh things are still okay up in the air all right so what were the purchases that vk cowboy made for uh the red army okay it's actually a very unusual purchase uh the purchase consists of three uh, strategic bombers and two naval transports. I believe that uh, all 50 IPCs were spent. Yeah, 
50 IPCs, if my math is not uh, uh, mistaken. So that is the purchases that, or those were the purchases that VK Cowboy made for uh, the Red Army. All right, so let's go ahead then with the order of battle. Uh, VK Cowboy uh, declared a total of seven battles for the Red Army. And let's uh, make the combat movements. All right, so the first combat, uh, one uh, Joseph Stalin Armored Division coming from Leningrad at a movement of two. This uh, Armored Division is blitzing through Karelia and Finland. So that's a uh, total movement of two. This attack goes unoccupied, uh, uh, unopposed. All right. The second battle is the Battle for Vyborg, where you have a total of seven German infantry divisions defending the Russian territory or Russian province that is currently occupied by the German Wehrmacht. Okay, in this attack, you'll have three Russian armored divisions, three infantry, one artillery, and one fighter squadron moving in at a movement of one. This fighter squadron will have three movements left in its fuel gauge. That's battle number three. Battle number four. Okay. Battle for Slovakia, Hungary. In this battle, you have one single Russian infantry division coming from Eastern Poland, moving in at a movement of one. All right. In this battle, you'll have one fighter, Russian fighter coming from uh, Novgorod, Leningrad, at a movement, movement of one two and three that fighter will have one movement left in its fuel gauge and that's battle number four battle number five you'll have one russian artillery division coming in from briansk at a movement of one it's just what goes in there unopposed and will uh take western ukraine okay the last uh two battles battles number five correction battles number six and number seven are the battles for Bessarabia and Romania, where you have one Russian Joseph Stalin Armored Division coming in at a movement of one and two and ends unopposed in Romania. All right, so that's a total of seven battles that the Red Army declared for this turn. All right, so what were the results of uh, combat? Well, let's uh, review them. Obviously, this battle was unopposed. Both Karelia and Finland fell to the Red Army. All seven Russian infantry divisions in Vyborg were smashed. However, on their return fire, they were able to take out one Russian infantry and one Russian artillery divisions. All right, so currently in Vyborg, you have three armor, two infantry occupying Vyborg. All right. Battle for Slovakia, Hungary. The German infantry division here was also knocked out, but on its return fire, it missed. Kind of fooled you there, right? Yeah, it missed. All right. Battle number five, battle for Western Ukraine. Obviously unopposed. And artillery, artillery division just invaded and occupied Western Ukraine unopposed. Same thing with Bessarabia and Romania. All right, so let's go ahead with the non-combat movements. Uh, let's go ahead then by landing those uh, aircraft that were used or that participated in the attacks in both Vyborg and Slovakia, Hungary. All right, I know I said that there have, were actually three movements here, but in all actuality, these aircraft have, this fighter squadron has four movements left. The one that attacked uh, Slovakia, Hungary has two movements left and that's because these aircraft these uh, fighter squadrons came from Leningrad where there is an air base all right so these aircraft will go back okay the fighter squadron in Vyborg will go back to Leningrad all right the one that participated in the attack for Slovakia Hungary will land in Belarus so that's going to be a movement of one all right and two all right, so let's go ahead then with the other non-combat movements. Uh, let me remove these blue chips because these move movements were already made for those aircraft. All right, the naval, uh, the destroyer season one twenty-seven will move at a movement of two, one, 
and two, and is currently in season 125. The AAA and Russian Infantry Division will move, will be actually be railed at a movement of two, one, and two into Eastern Poland. All right, so currently in Eastern Poland, you have one AAA and one infantry. All right, the single infantry division in Bryansk will move south and will occupy the Ukraine at a movement of one. Okay, the uh, uh, let me see, the one of the two armored divisions in Bryansk will move at a movement of two and will move to Belarus, actually at a movement of one. Okay will go into Belarus, all right? The other uh, armored division coming from Bryansk will move at a movement of two, one and two, and will go into the Baltic states. Let's go to Moscow, where you have uh, one infantry division moving south and will be railed at a movement of one and two, will link up with the other infantry division in Ukraine. All right, of course, this infantry was railed as well. All right, so then you have another infantry division going to the Baltic states. It'll be railed at a movement of one, two, and three. Okay, then you have another remaining. The last infantry division coming from Moscow will move at a movement of three, one, two, and three and is now in eastern Poland. And last but not least, the remaining armored division in Moscow will go to Belarus at a movement of one and two. And I believe that does it for all of the non-combat movements on the eastern front. All right, so let's go ahead then and go to the Pacific Theater where you have a few other non-combat movements the two infantry divisions in Korea will move north and will move into Manchuria. One infantry division currently in Shantong will move south and will link up with its Chinese ally and will occupy Shanghai. The remaining uh, Russian army, I believe it's two, three, four, five, to 11 infantry will move south and occupy Amway and along with two AAAs moving into the Chinese province of Amway. And that's it for all the non-combat movements. As you can see, uh, Cowboy is setting himself up here for a final thrust into German uh, occupied territories on the in the Eastern Front. All right, so let's go ahead then with the final placements of the units that Cowboy purchased for the Red Army, all three, okay, of these uh, strategic bombers will be placed in Bessarabia. Okay, interesting purchase, interesting purchase, in interesting purchase and interesting placement. Okay, so three, unit, three uh, strategic bombers are now in Bessarabia. Uh, the two naval transports, of course, will be placed in C-Zone 115 with the rest of the Russian fleet. All right, so now we all now get a clearer picture. Look, before I go into my little rant here, let me just turn these, uh, get rid of these roundels and get rid of a few German and there we go. This is Russian. This is Russian. So... Now we have a clear picture of where Germany, or actually Russia currently is at. Russia has now liberated all of its national territories and has gone even further and is now occupying Finland, is currently occupying Slovakia, Hungary, Hungary and Romania. So definitely a very uh, expansive Soviet Union that is preparing for a final thrust into the heartland of Germany. However, as they say, it's not over till the fat lady sings and Germany will have a response for the Soviet counteroffensive uh, coming from the Red Army. 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, let me know what your thoughts and commentaries are involving the strategies and tactics that we are using in this game. As I like, as I like to say, don't forget to bunker down and play.